welcome back to my channel and it's me again Maureen and I will be having a Q&A today and it is very special kasi meron akong special guest. I collaborated with some of my friends. Um, they are also YouTubers and they are all from UST Med. They will be giving you all of their answers regarding their med on their med lives and also um, how they survive their pre-med courses and anything you need to know about med school. Ayan. So, Without further ado, let's get started. Hello! So, I will be answering some of the questions that Marina sent me. So, the first question is, ilang years para maging doctor? Actually, for med proper, it's just four years. So, um, after you graduate from um, your medicine degree, you actually get an MD after your name. But, for you to become a licensed doctor, it's around five years because you have to still take the board exam. And after kasi your four years of medical school, you still have a year of um, medical internship. So usually, yun yung time frame to actually become a doctor. But after that, it's up to you if you choose to go to residency, to go to fellowship, to subspecialize, etc. But after actually you take the board exam, you're actually already a doctor. Uh, next question, kapag po ba kumakain ng spicy food, mapapabilis ang metabolism? Well, according to what I've read, based on research, yes, because um, spicy food kasi contains yung capsaicin. Um, it's, a, it's, it's the ingredient that actually is a component that increases your metabolism. So, yun yun. Although, um, also at the same time, nag increase yung satiety mo. So, um, next, is it okay to be in a relationship during med school days? Um, I was in a relationship all my four years in med school, so yes, that is okay. Um, I was lucky to have someone uh, not in the medical field who was very supportive of my schedule and very understanding of my time, which is a good thing. And usually, kapag to make things work in, um, to make a relationship work when you're in medical school it just actually has to be um compromise and gonna understanding and patience because uh when you're a medical student you have a lot of um no time to study ganon, and uh you just have to actually balance it all out compromise lang. um next is tell me something about um residency so ilang, ilang years for pdn specialty so residency depends on actually the, uh, the specialty that you want to pursue so if you want to go to surgery usually five years if you want to go OB four years for PDNIM three years same as in ophthalmology ENT and then three years then yun. actually ENT pala may four years if I'm not mistaken so yun yung time frame kapag residency ka but residency is focus on um, training na on that certain specialty that you want and that you chose um, ano ang edge ng USD sa other universities? I think USD is the way the teaching kasi ng USD is still very traditional. So it's still in a classroom setting, lectures ganon, and um, everyone is very helpful of each other. Like if there's one thing that I learned in USD is walang iwanan. Like everybody is there to help you, uh, even though I mean you think. In medicine is a very competitive field but actually everybody is there to help each other out and yeah it's a it's a, it's a great um, place to actually be with people who want to pursue the same career as you and you know no one gets left behind and everyone's just helping each other out lifting each other up so yeah I guess that's it and yep yeah. <laughs> Hi, my name is Christine Abraham, um, and I'm a second year medical student from UST Med. So I was asked to do a um, Q and A, and so I so I will be answering that now. So the first question is: um, Any tips um, on what to do pag sabay sabay yung quizzes and exams? And well, the only thing I can suggest is that learn how to prioritize a subject. Um, as much as possible, don't sacrifice the subject. But then, um, meron talagang isang subject na you need to focus on more. But then, you have to try your best to at least read 
all of the topics at least try um, and then so next is the cost of USD med so maybe tuition fee uh, the tuition fee well for us in second year med is around 140 to 150,000 per sem uh, it depends on the subjects that you are taking so per section iba iba yung subject per sem um, each section is arranged alphabetically so at the end of the year naman um yung total ng tuition you will just be the same so it varies lang per sem third question is any tips oh what are the things what are the things you wish you knew before entering med school um, I wish I had more practice on advanced studying kasi grabe yung tulong na advanced studying here in med. And, ayun. Next question is, how do you balance your studies and your social life? So, well, for me kasi, social, my social life is like my form of reward. So, it is where I distress. So, as much as possible, I don't really let go of my social life. Um, of course, nakakabaliw din kasi pag puro med lang yung um, ifo-focus natin. So, as much as possible, try to have time for your friends and your family. Last is best pre-med course. So, ito, um, honestly, there is no best pre-med course. Uh, especially, I can't really um, say much about the different courses kasi syempre I don't have the experience of being in that course. So, if you're going to pick a pre-med course, pick a course that you will really enjoy, that you feel like you will enjoy in college kasi um, when you enter in med school, hindi ganun kalaki yung weight ng pre-med course mo because lahat ng pre-med courses may kanya-kanyang edge and may kanya-kanyang um, disadvantage as well when entering in med school. So it's really up to your preference when choosing your pre-med course. So the first tip that I could give is probably na study at your own pace, study at the time na works for you. Kasi for me, ngayong quarantine, alam naman natin na sobrang iba-iba na ng oras natin. Like ako, 4 a.m. na ako natutulog, nagigising ako around 12 noon or 11 a.m. So, uh, make sure na kahit na nag-iba na yung body clock mo, nakakapag-aral ka pa rin. And productive pa rin yung day mo. So, I start by eating my brunch. Siyempre, 11 a.m. na ako nagigising, di ba? Or around 12 noon. And then, maliligo ako. And then, siyempre, hindi naman, hindi naman ako magkaka- will agad or like hindi naman ako agad merong energy or motivation to study. But, I make sure na, yun nga, at the end of the day, makakapag-aral pa rin ako. At least kahit konti lang. And then, my technique is to take a bath. Guys, sobrang helpful ng pagliligo and pag-aayos. If girl ka or guy ka, you can do your makeup, you can do whatever na makakapag- ano sa'yo? Makakapag-feel good sa'yo. Na makakapag-inspire sa'yo, makakapag-motivate sa'yo, mag-aral talaga. And, ayun. So, yun yung akin na. Yun yung ginagawa ko kasi na Ginagawa ko pa rin yung normal things at a different time. And nag-aayos ako for sure. Nag Ganito, nag-aayos ako. So, ayun yung first tip ko. So, second tip is huwag kayo ma-pressure sa iba yung classmates or sa iba yung blockmates. Kasi, kanya-kanya man, kanya, kasi, kanya-kanya, sorry Maureen, please edit. Kasi kanya-kanya naman tayong way of coping up with this quarantine, this coronavirus. So, ayun, huwag ka ma-pressure. Okay, huwag ka ma-pressure. Chill, take your time. Basta make sure yun nga, make sure na nakakagawa ka pa rin at least kahit one task per day. And hindi naman porket ikaw wala kang ginagawa or wala pang nagagawa, parang patapon ka na, ba? This is a different time of, ano, paano ba explain E eh, baka sitong time natin ngayon, hindi siya yung normal day lang. Hindi siya yung normal na nangyari sa atin. So, ayun nga, parang don't pressure yourself. Just do what you can do. Make sure to get things done. Make sure na nagagawa mo pa rin mga dapat mong gawin. And nakakaabot ka sa deadlines mo. Pero yun lang yung akin. Don't pressure yourself too much. Take it slow, take your time. Study at your own pace, study at your own time. And yeah, 
So, top three things na hindi mawawala sa isang med student is probably iPad, Apple Pencil, and siguro phone, ball pen, earphones, ganun. Parang usually kasi yun kasi yung nakikita kong mga gamit na lagi nilang dala. Pero most of the time, iPad siguro. iPad reviewers, depends kasi sa tao if more on kaya nilang paperless and if not, syempre, mismong printed out. So, ayun, yun lang. Yun lang talaga yung madalas makita kong gahawak ng mga med students. I know, I know, hindi yun top 3, pero guys, parang pantay-pantay talaga yun. Basta anything na may reviewer nila, kasi kahit sa phone, di ba, nakakapag-aral ka, nakakapag-review ka. So, anything na review-related, yun talaga yung lagi yung dala ng med students. If, hindi lang gamit, kasi yung top 3 gamit is gamit. Pero, another thing na pwede siguro lagi nilang bit-bit is coffee. So, ayun. Well, so country naman na gusto ko matry for field experience, wala naman akong certain country as long as matutuwa ko, ma-challenge naman ako ng konti, mag-grow ako as a doctor, yun lang naman yung mahalaga for me. Wala talagang specific place for learning. Kahit, di ba, ngayon nga eh, kahit nasa bahay lang tayo, natututo tayo, nag-grow tayo. So, ayun, wala yun for me sa country as long as, yun, nakaka-aral ako, nag-learn ako, Nag-grow ako and nagiging better doctor ako. So, ayun. Eto, if iniyakan na subject, grabe, siguro pinaka-iniyakan na lang ha. Siguro neuro kasi grabe guys, nakakaloka kasi yung neuro namin sa USD. Parang dalawa lang yung pinagkukuha na ng grade. Parang quiz and long exam. So, ano na, ba? If hindi ka mag- aayos ng pag-aaral. Or, hindi ko sure if quiz or long exam, pero parang quiz and practical exam. Basta parang ganun lang. Basta ang bigat talaga ng quizzes ng, ng neuro sa amin. So, yun talaga yung iniyakan ko na akala ko, ay, hindi ko kaya. Pero guys, nakaya naman. So, sa awa ng Diyos, ayun. Second year naman na ako. Ayun. <laughs> so, when it comes to entrance exam naman, is this NMAT? If NMAT kasi, most probably, ang kailangan mo lang naman aralin is, ano ba, chemistry, bio, physics, and um, social science. So, parang basic knowledge lang naman sila medyo. If, ano ka ha, if science course ka. Pero siguro if business course ka, kailangan mo pa mag-aral ng deeper doon. Kasi wala naman atang our business course na may chem. I'm not sure. Actually, di ko sure talaga. Pero, if science course ka, feel ko naman kayang-kaya naman na yung NMAT. Kailangan mo lang din talaga alam yung mga basics. Hindi naman super hirap na mga kung our questions sa physics na matatagalan ka mag -isip. Usually kasi parang tinatest lang talaga nila yung general knowledge mo or basic knowledge. And yun. So, ano pa ba mabibigay kong tips for NMAT? Siguro make sure to study smart and answer smart kasi limited time lang yung meron ka eh. As much as possible, syempre gusto mong masagot lahat yon. Pero if hindi mo kaya tapusin, actually, try mo pa rin tapusin. Huwag ka masyado magstay sa number na matagal masyado. Kung ano na unang mong naisip na sagot, yun na isagot mo. And if may time ka pa na free at the end of the exam, eh di balikan mo. Pero if wala ka ng time, at least nasagutan mo lahat, di ba? So, ayun. So, yung pre-med ko is pharma and yung nakita kong major advantage ng pharma students sa med is probably so, hindi na sobrang familiar pero mas familiar na talaga sila sa drugs compared to other people kasi syempre napag-aaralan na namin yon especially yung mga names, ganon. So, yun yung pinaka-advantage ng pharma students. Tapos, mayroon namang subjects na kahit pa paano oh, familiar ka or narinig mo na, hindi na totally new terms. Pero disadvantage siguro, wala naman din. For me, wala naman disadvantage. Kasi lahat naman ng courses, may disadvantages talaga. Like, hindi kayo pantay-pantay. Hindi kayo same ng alam. Gets? Parang talagang may mga edge kayo. Kanya-kanyang edge na subject. Meron din kayo kanya-kanyang weakness na subject. Pero if disadvantage ng pharma, wala naman. I don't think may... I don't think na 
disadvantage yung matatawag ko doon. Kahit naman sa ibang, kunwari medtech ako, feel ko wala ako masasabing disadvantage talaga. Pero more on advantages or more on edge namin. Ganun. And yun nga, yung sa pharma is edge talaga yung ano, familiar ka sa name ng drugs. Ganun. So, ayun. So, ayun lang guys. Yun lang naman yung questions natin. And I hope nasagot ko kahit pa paano yung mga questions nyo. So, ayun. Make sure to subscribe to Maureen's channel and subscribe to my channel. I hope to see you guys on my channel, of course. And syempre, follow me on my social media accounts. It's at Den Sarmiento. And yeah. Bye! And I think that's all for today and thank you guys for watching this video. Sana lahat ng questions yung nasagot namin and also hi to Crystal Cortez and also Jairvan Consejo. And thank you guys for watching and see you on my next vlog. Goodbye!